Hello everyone. In last lecture, we discussed about the development of endosperm, that is the nutritive tissue. The types of endosperm on the basis of their mode of development. There are three types of endosperms: nuclear endosperm, cellular endosperm, and helical endosperm that we are studied in our last lecture. Again, in last lecture. we discussed about the mosaic endosperm that is the one more type of the endosperm special type of the endosperm and at the end of last lecture we discussed about the development of embryo how the embryo develops so in today's lecture we are going to study the remaining part in our topic that is the reproduction in a lower and higher plant that is from the development of seed and fruit then apomixis then there are uh, certain types of the apomixis then polyembryony that we are going to study and parthenocarpy also that we are going to study in our today's lecture so let us start with the first point in today's lecture that is the development of seed and fruit how the seed develop and how the fruit develops at previous lecture we discussed about the development of seed and development fruit development of fruit how the seed develops that is seed develops from the ovules which are present in the ovary and how the fruit develops that fruit it is modified from the ovary wall when ovary wall matures then it develops into the fruit and inside that fruit there are presence of seeds and these seeds develops from the ovule so let us start with the development of seed so this seed it is the most significant feature it is the important feature as that seed further gives rise to the plant when that seed matures then that seed matures and it gives rise to the plant or the offsprings so before the development of plant there is essential to pollination so the flower must undergoes pollination after the successful pollination then there is fertilization takes place we know that fertilization process and after the successful fertilization there is development of zygote then there is development of embryo which we discussed in our previous lecture and finally from that flower it gives rise to the fruit flower to fruit and inside the fruit there is development of seeds so the development of seed and the development of fruit here the process of fertilization is must in the structure of anatropous ovule we come to know that the distinct coverings around the ovule that is the integuments the outer integument and inner integument and these integuments they forms the coverings around the seed so the outer integument it gives rise to the outer seed coat that is the testa and the inner integument it gives rise to the thin and membranous structure it is called as the tegmen so the role of integuments here around the seed which form the covering two distinct coverings that is the outer is testa and inner is tegmen it is important let us come to know some examples where the nature that is the nucellus in the ovary we know that nucellus it is the nutritive part in the ovule the nucellus in the ovule it may persist in some genera like the black pepper and the beet adds a thin papery layer it is called as the perisperm while the part of endosperm inside the seeds it plays a significant role as it stores the reserve of food material and this reserve of food material it is used in the development of embryo 
let us come to know the diagrams where the here the monocot seed for example maize seed is there here the dicot seed where the bean seed is there the difference between these two seeds is monocot seed it is having the single cotyledon while the dicot seed it is having the two cotyledons and here there is part of endosperm that is the nutritive tissue and it is the part of embryo where the plumule it is covered by coleoptile and a radical embryonal axis it is covered by the coleoriza again it is same in this diagram that is the dicot seed where there is difference only in relation with the two cotyledons so the endosperm it is the nutritive tissue and this endosperm it helps or it provides the nutrition to this developing embryo and after the germination of this seed after the germination of this seed either it is monocot seed or dicot seed when that seed undergoes germination after attaining the favorable conditions like the water moisture favorable temperature then the embryonal axis develops like the plumule and radical where the plumule gives rise to the shoot system and the radical gives rise to the root system and from these parts the development of new plant takes place so the development in relation with the maize seed and in relation with the bean seed that is the dicot and monocot seed then let us come to know the types of seeds there are two types of the seeds one that is the endospermic or albuminous seed and second one that is the non endospermic or ex albuminous seeds let us come to know the endospermic seed or albuminous seed what is endospermic seed in case of endospermic seed for example in castor coconut and maize here the diagram that is the corn kernel or the maize seed is there which is the example of endospermic or albuminous seed here the major part it remains present as it is that is the endosperm so the endosperm remains conspicuous in the endospermic seed or albuminous seeds and it forms the major portion in this seed so therefore that seed it is called as the endospermic seed or albuminous seeds on the other hand in non endospermic seed or ex albuminous seed here the example is pea seed beans these are the examples of non endospermic or ex albuminous seed non means there is lack of endosperm ex albuminous means there is absence of albumin that is the nutritive tissue so here in a non endospermic or ex albuminous seeds the part of endosperm that is the nutritive part of the endosperm it is completely utilized in the development of seed so embryo absorbs the food reserve from the endosperm completely ha ithe point mahatvacha ahe ithe jo kahi endosperm cha portion ahe to embryo kay karto purna pane utilize karto during its developmental stages and endosperm becomes disappear therefore it is called as the non endospermic or ex albuminous seeds in case of these non endospermic or ex albuminous seed endosperm disappears or disorganizes in mature seeds in these seeds which are the majority of dicot seeds in these seeds the non endospermic seeds it acts as a food storage here the storage of food in the seeds takes place and they may perform the function of photosynthesis and the portion from the ovule which is called as the micropyle the micropyle which is the small pore in the seed coat it allows the entry for water and oxygen during its soaking process therefore when through the microbial water and oxygen enters then that seed germinates and after the successful germination of seed 
there is formation of new plantlet explosion it is all about the development of seed and the types of seeds that is the endospermic seed or albuminous seed and non endospermic seed or ex albuminous seeds then let us come to know next part that is the development of fruit how the fruit develops previously we discussed about the development of fruit that is the ovary it further modifies into the fruit that ovary begins to differentiate into the fruit and ovary wall the wall of the ovary it develops into the pericarp again when that ovary undergoes a certain hormonal changes hormonal changes by developing seeds then ovary matures and it develops into the fruit and the fruit it is showing the two major portions that is the outermost it is the pericarp and the innermost it is called as the seed and this pericarp it showing the three distinct layers that is outer epicarp middle mesocarp and inner one that is the endocarp and inside this endocarp there is presence of seed so it is all about the development of fruit then come to know about the significance of seed and fruit formation first significance it provides the nourishment to the developing seeds again it protects the seeds in immature condition then seeds which serves as a important propagating organ that is the units of plant that means the seeds further gives rise to the new plant plantlet that is the propagating organ seeds and fruits develop special devices for their dispersal and thus it helps in the distribution of species that means the spreading of seeds and fruits from one place to another place they form the special type of the devices or structures through which they can disperse from one place to another place and there is dispersal of seeds then that seed matures there then that seed grows there and develops into the new plantlets it is all about the development of seed and development of fruit and its significance that is the significance of seed and significance of fruit formation the short answer question may be asked on this content then let us come to know next part which is again related with the seed that is the dormancy what is a seed dormancy let us come to know the definition of seed dormancy it is the structural and physiological adaptive mechanism for the survival it is called as the dormancy so this dormancy period it is the metabolic state where there is arrest of that metabolic state it is by means of structural or physiological arrest and it is useful in the survival purpose so there are many aspects related with this seed dormancy like the facilitates the survival of organisms during the adverse environmental conditions when there is a certain stressful conditions then this seed dormancy it provides the chances of survival again the mature and viable seeds they will not germinate even in the presence of favorable conditions they become dormant the mature seeds and viable seeds if the favorable conditions are available again they will not mature they uh, undergoes dormancy period and they are dispersed at the different places during the dormancy when there is a dispersal of these mature and viable seeds takes place then and then only after the dispersal at specific places that viable seed germinates only after the completion of dormancy period let us come to know the certain examples of seeds and their dormancy period some examples of oldest mature seeds that have grown into viable plant 
आर एज फॉलोस नंबर वन लिपिनस आर्टिकस टेन थाउजेंड इयर्स फिनिक्स डैक्टिलिफेरा टू थाउजेंड इयर्स सम सीड्स आर हैविंग शॉर्ट लाइव टाइम स्पैन दैट इज दिट्रस and some tiny seeds are easy for dispersal for example striga orchids and orobanka so these are the certain examples which showing the different time period with their seed dormancy the definition of this seed dormancy it may be asked for one mark then let us come to know next point that is the apomixis the term itself indicates its meaning apo means away and mixis means mixing so in this apo mixis here the formation of embryo takes place but the condition is that here the formation of embryo takes place through the asexual reproduction asexual means without formation of gametes without formation of gametes and the most important part is there without process of fertilization so the formation of gamete is absent and mechanism of fertilization is absent and there is formation of embryo takes place there is absence of process of meiosis there is no meiosis and there is no syngamy syngamy or it is also called as the process of first fertilization in the process of double fertilization so it is absent in the process of apomixis that is the formation of embryo and the development of embryo takes place through the asexual reproduction then let us come to know about the apogamy and apospory apogamy gamy in apogamy here there is development of sporophyte in apospory here there is development of gametophyte in apogamy the development of sporophyte or the embryo like structure takes place without the process of fertilization in apospory here the development of diploid gametophyte takes place without meiosis so here in apomixis that is during the formation of embryo the apogamy and apospory it is without the process of fertilization in apogamy in apospory there is no meiosis for example orange and mango is there these are the examples of apospory then let us come to know the categories of apomixis there are three categories in apomixis number 1 recurrent apomixis number second non recurrent apomixis and number third adventive apomixis so what is the aim of this process that is the apomixis in case of apomixis the end product is the formation of embryo but that embryo formation it is without the process of gamete formation and without the process of meiosis let us come to know the first category in apomixis that is the recurrent apomixis here the embryo sac develops from the archesporial cell or it develops from other part of nucellus in the ovule so in case of diplospory the unreduced embryo sac is derived from the diploid megaspore mother cell for example in a teraxacum the embryo sac which which is developed it is from the diploid megaspore mother cell in case of apospory the nucellar cell it gives rise to the apomictic embryo sac and it is all about the recurrent apomixis then let us come to know the second category that is the non recurrent apomixis here that diploid megaspore mother cell undergoes meiotic division and haploid embryo sac is developed and this embryo sac it arises from the egg by parthenogenesis parthenogenesis means without fertilization and also it arises from some 
other part of haploid cell that is the gametophyte through the apogamy. So the plants which develops from this non-recurrent apomixis, they are generally sterile, means they are not able to produce the further plantlets. They do not reproduce sexually. For example, in case of Nicotia, Tobacco, Tambaku, this non-recurrent apomixis is present. So there are next category also that is the adventative apomixis. Here the embryos in adventative embryony, here the embryos it may develop from the somatic nucellus or from the integuments along with the normal zygotic embryo. For example, in case of mango, orange and lemon, the adventative embryony is present which gives rise to the condition it is called as the polyembryony. Then what is the significance of apomixis? Genetically identical plants can be produced effectively and rapidly by the process of apomixis. The short answer question it may be asked on this content that is the what is apomixis? Describe the various categories of apomixis or define apogamy, define apospory or define diplospory. That type of questions it may be asked on the apomixis point. Then let us come to know the next point that is the parthenocarpy. Parthenocarpy term it is coined by the scientist Noll in 1902. And by this process of parthenocarpy, the development of fruit takes place, but it is without fertilization. The condition in which fruit is developed without the process of fertilization, it is called the parthenocarpy. For example, in some varieties like pineapple, banana and papaya, it develops by the process of Parthenocarpy. What happens here? In Parthenocarpy, during the formation of fruit, the placental tissues in the unfertilized ovary, it produces auxin IAA, that is the indol 3 acetic acid. Indol 3 acetic acid. It is the important point which may be asked for the right answer in one sentence. It is responsible for the enlargement of ovary into the fruits. And that fruits resembles the normally produced fruit, but the most important point in Parthenocarpy is it is seedless without seeds. Seeds develop hot night in Parthenocarpy without process of fertilization, and there is absence of seeds. These parthenogenesis in the parthenogenesis. The development of embryo directly from the egg cell or male gamete and it is the kind of apogamy. Then how this parthenocarpy induces artificially it is by using or spraying the gibberellin growth hormone, plant growth hormone by delaying pollination or by use of foreign pollen grains. So, the process of parthenocarpy, it is induced artificially by these three ways. So, short answer question on this content, it may be also asked, what is parthenocarpy? How it is initiated? What is the mechanism behind the parthenocarpy? Like questions, it may be asked on this content. Then let us come to know the last point in this topic that is the polyembryony. Poly means many and embryony means formation of embryos. There is formation of more than one embryos. What is the definition of polyembryony? Development of more than one embryos inside the seed and this condition is described as polyembryony. Ekapiksha just embryo seed shaad madhe asna manjaj polyembryony. This condition of polyembryony first noticed by Leeuwenhoek in year 1719 in the seeds of 
सिट्रस जीनस द ऑकरेंस ऑफ मोर देन वन एम्ब्रियो इन द सीड रिजल्ट इन द मल्टीपल सीडलिंग्स एंड द एडिशन additional embryos results from the differentiation and development of various maternal and zygotic tissues it is associated with the ovule of seed this condition of polyembryony it may be true or false and it are depending upon whether many embryos arising in the same embryo sac or in a different embryo sac in the same ovule then come to know there are two types of the polyembryony number 1 adventive polyembryony and number second cleavage polyembryony where the development of embryos takes place let us come to know the first adventive polyembryony here the embryo develops directly from the diploid cell of the nucellus and integuments which is present in the citrus that is the adventive polyembryony development of embryo directly from the nucellus cell of the nucellus and integuments then let us come to know the second type that is the cleavage embryony the name itself indicate that is the separation that is the cleavage here that zygote pro embryo sometimes divides or cleaves into many parts or the units and that separated units or the parts it develops into the separate embryo that is the cleavage polyembryony what is the significance of polyembryony it increases the chances of survival of the new plant as there is formation of many embryos again second the nucellar adventive polyembryony it it is of great significance in the part that is the horticulture process so it is about the polyembryony and with this we completed our first topic from our syllabus that is the reproduction in lower and higher plants so learn carefully this topic from previous part study well and prepare yourself in this covid period so it is significant or improving your understanding capacity i hope it will help to you for your better improvement so please go through this topic and study yourself in this covid pandemic period stay safe stay happy and study well thank you